From the consumer products we use every day, to the cars we drive, to the jets we fly in, aluminum plays a huge part in our lives. But like other commodities, the price of aluminum can fluctuate wildly. And that means risk and uncertainty for the producers of aluminum products and the consumers. But in the heart of Greater London, there's a place where the world comes to manage that risk and uncertainty. I'm Andy Cooper, and this is the Aluminum Channel. It's called the London Metal Exchange, or LME, and it's at the epicenter of industrial metals trading. Here to tell us about the unique role metals trading plays in the world economy is Andrew Dodsworth, Head of Market Operations and Interim COO for the LME. Welcome to the Aluminum Channel, Andrew. Thank you very much for allowing me to be uh, part of this broadcast today. Our second guest is Del Miller, Treasurer and Vice President of Commodity Risk Management for Kaiser Aluminum. Thanks for joining us, Del. Well, thank you very much, Andy. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Andrew, we'll start with you. Can you tell us a little about the origins of the LME and why it was created? The LME was founded in 1877, although metals trading was taking place for at least 200 years prior to that. The reason why the LME was founded back in 1877 was for the same reason that it exists today. It's for the management of risk in the metals industry. And it's really to serve that purpose that it was created and formalized back then and it still serves that purpose today. Andrew, please explain the trading process at the LME, how prices are established, and what goes on inside the ring. We've got three trading venues. Um, one is the phone, the other is an electronic trading system, but the one that is the most vibrant and really gives a true sense of risk management uh, today, very much as it was when the LME was created, was the ring. And it's called the ring because that's where people stood around in a circle making prices to each other back in 1877. And that's what happens today. So tell us, why has trading in the ring survived in its current form for so long? The ring has survived because it provides a specific service and services to the physical market that no other exchange can provide. The physical cash price that is determined every single day by the LME by its members trading face-to-face -face is a unique service to the physical market and is one that the ring is absolutely the right venue to provide that service to clients. When was aluminum added to the exchange and why? In the case of aluminum, this was introduced in December 1978 and the current product was traded from August 1987 onwards. The market realized in the late 70s and mid 80s that there was an increasing usage of aluminum worldwide and yet there was a gap in the ability to manage the price risk associated to it. Dell, you manage risk for Kaiser Aluminum. What do you find most challenging about the job? You know, it's, it's the dynamic and changing nature of the market. Um, on any given day, you can have extreme price volatility. Uh, you can have very little happening. Basically, it's a different challenge every single day. So what are some of the factors that contribute to market volatility? You know, it's a whole host of things. You can have fundamental impacts, for example, supply disruptions, new production coming on stream, changes in demand, uh, to technical influences, for example, investor trading, algorithmic trading, etc. cetera. Um, but basically, you have a significant number of market participants that are impacting the change of price in any given day. So Dell, what tools are available to help you manage or hedge price risk? Well, hedging is uh, going to allow an individual to manage price risk of an underlying commodity using a financial derivative. Uh, for example, a buyer of a financial derivative might use a forward or a futures position in order to manage a specific price risk. Alternatively, a buyer could use an option structure, say a put or a call option, where they have the right but not the obligation to lock in at a specific price. So is there a price premium associated with using these option tools? Uh, yes, there is, in fact. Uh, Any time that you're seeking flexibility, you're essentially going to have to pay a premium for that flexibility. Dell, please tell us about the price curve. Yeah, the pricing curve for a non-perishable commodity such as aluminum is typically upward sloping. And by this, I mean that forward prices are higher than nearby prices. Uh, and this is going to be because of the cost of carry. you got uh, financing, storage, etc. We call this type of a curve a contango. 
You also have circumstances where you may have what we refer to as a backwardation. Uh, this is a downward sloping curve where forward prices are in fact lower than nearby prices. And this is gonna be fundamentally present when you have situations where demand exceeds supply in the near term. Dell, can you explain the concept of take or pay? Frequently when a customer uh, makes a commitment uh, for a particular type of product, uh, they need to manage the price risk. And as such, we offer, and typically the industry offers, uh, price management as a service. When we lock in a price for that customer, we're going to actually go out and take a offsetting position in the marketplace to manage that price risk for them. In the end, we expect that customer to ultimately take the product, but to the extent that they do not take the product, uh, then they will have to pay for the financial implications of that derivative structure that we've put in place to manage the price exposure for the customer. And finally, one last question for both of you. In your estimation, is commodities trading an art or a science? Well, I'd have to say it's a bit of both. I mean, clearly you're going to find participants who will argue that it's a science because they'll be looking at market fundamentals, they're looking at charts, and they'll be able to determine uh, where markets move based on statistics and raw information. I would like to also think that despite the advances of technology, this is still very much a marketplace that involves human beings. And where you have human beings, you have emotion. And when you have emotion, then that becomes an art. You know what, here I think I, uh, I agree with Andrew. It's a little bit of both. There's certainly an emotional element uh, to trading, but when you look at it from our perspective, we're gonna be laying off a very specific risk uh, that we have taken on, and we're gonna be laying it off in a very specific manner. Gentlemen, thanks for being here and helping us to understand the complex nature of metals commodity trading. Thank you very much indeed for having me on. I very much enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, Andy. Enjoyed being here. For the Aluminum Channel, I'm Andy Cooper. Thanks for watching.